Spring break was just around the corner when I decided I wanted to go to Colorado for a couple of days. This was because my friend invited me to go dirt biking through the Colorado mountains. In Colorado, the place where we usually ride has lots of amazing bike paths through the mountains and through the dense woods. So when my friend also informed me that he is going during spring break, I decided to buy the tickets. A week later, the time came and I got on a plane and flew to Colorado. I met up with my friend and both of us went and rented out some dirt bikes from a nearby local shop. As I was filling out the paperwork, I couldn't help but notice how old and broken this place was. The weird thing is that there was only two dirt bikes left. The man at the front asked me where I was going to dirt bike. I replied that we were taking the North Trail. After I said that, his expression changed. It went from a normal expression to a more frightened expression. I decided not to question him about it and just hand in my completed paperwork. After that was done, my friend and I got on our bikes and headed back to the hotel. The next day around 3, we headed towards the North Trail. At around 3.30, we arrived and we took out the bikes from the back of the truck and we started dirt biking. This trail takes a couple hours because it's a split between mountains and dense forest. As we were hiking through the mountains, everything seemed great. The scenery was amazing and the trail was awesome. As soon as we hit the dense forest, everything changed. There was lots of large tree trunks constantly blocking the path, resulting in my friend and I going very slow. After we cleared the tree trunks, I picked up the pace again and was speeding through the forest. That was the last thing I knew before waking up. My friend was sitting next to me. I looked around at first, confused, as to where we were. My friend basically told me that I hit an invisible tripwire on the ground. This caused my bike to flip midair and crash, causing me to black out. Before I could ask my friend more questions, he just said, let's get out of here. My bike is broken, I told him. That's fine, we can walk, we just need to leave this place. By this time, the sun was starting to go down and it was really getting dark. I am lucky to not have been injured, so I was able to start walking towards the exit to the woods. As I was walking, my friend kept frantically looking behind him, as if something was following us. This was becoming so frequent, I had to question him about it. That was when he explained the whole situation. As soon as I hit the tripwire, he slowed down and ran over to where I was to see if I was okay. But as he looked around, he saw an old woman staring at us from behind a clearing in the woods. He couldn't just leave me there, so he stood there with the woman staring at him for a couple minutes. That was why he was rushing when I finally woke up to leave the place. As we were both walking, he looked behind and thought he saw the same woman again following us. Now that I fully understood the whole story, I was scared. We both broke into a sprint to try and leave these woods. That was when we heard a loud laughing coming from the woods. That was the last thing I wanted to hear right now. That pretty much confirmed that we were being followed by some creepy woman in the woods. Luckily, we reached the clearing out of the dense forest and we hopped into my friend's truck. Before completely driving off, we took a glance at the woods, but we couldn't see anything. Either way, we were not going to stick around so we left. The next day, we wanted to return the bikes, but when we reached the bike shop, it was closed. The local police happened to be passing by, and the officer told my friend and I that the shop and North Trail were closed for spring break due to a murder that happened on that trail recently. They also ran the plates on the bikes and found out that they were stolen. That was when I realized the bike shop, tripwire, and creepy woman was all a setup for someone to murder me and my friend. It was finally the first day of spring break for me. I had booked a flight to Miami, Florida with my friend. We were both set to leave the first day of spring break. After packing our bags, we went to the airport, got on a plane, and later arrived in Miami. If anyone has ever went to Miami during spring break, you would know that it is very crowded down there this time of the year. Personally, I did not care. I just wanted to get away from the cold in New Jersey. Anyways, once we arrived in Miami, we called in an Uber to take us to the Airbnb. My friend and I ended up renting an Airbnb on the beach. As soon as we got there, we put our stuff down and went down to the ocean. As we were walking down to the ocean, I turned around to look at the house. As I was turning my head, I caught a gaze of the upstairs window. I thought I saw a shadow. I was so caught off guard I had to look again. There was a shadow. There was a man standing in the window staring at me. I turned to my friend and gestured for him to look up at the house. 
What the hell is that? He questioned. That was when it hit me. We were just in the house like five minutes earlier, and there was nobody in there. Now I got scared. Just like somebody from a horror movie, the man slowly backed away and disappeared from the window. Let's go, I said, towards my friend. We have to check it out. Both of us started walking back towards the house. Once inside, we began looking everywhere. Keep in mind, we just got to the Airbnb, so we didn't know where everything was. After a half hour of searching, we decided to give up and just go out to party because that is why we were in Miami in the first place. At the party, I must have gotten a little too drunk to the point where I decided to leave early and return back to the Airbnb. I told my friend, but he decided to stay for a little longer. On my way home, I noticed the lights in my room at the Airbnb was on. I remember turning the light off before I left. I instantly got a rush of adrenaline. I quickly ran upstairs to my room, but there was nobody there. This time, I decided to call the cops because things were getting weird. When the cops finally arrived, they looked throughout the entire house. In the meantime, my friend arrived back from the party. That was exactly when the cops left the house, holding a man who looked to be in his 40s in handcuffs. That's when they also explained the whole story. Apparently, there was a secret door that led to the attic, and in the attic, there was a small crawl space where the man was hiding. Inside there was a bed and food, so the man has been secretly living in the Airbnb the whole time that my friend and I were there. We instantly called the Airbnb owner and canceled our stay. Since we did not want this to ruin our spring break, we booked a couple nights at a nearby hotel. I'm just glad we did not fall asleep in that house because who knows what the man would have done. It was the first day of spring break. My friend and I wanted to go stargazing. Today also happened to be one of the hottest days of the year, with lots of clear skies. After packing our tents and sleeping bags, we headed out on the one hour journey towards the woods. We looked online for the best spot to see the stars, and we ended up finding a spot near the woods where there was not a lot of city lights. Near the woods, there was also a huge bike trail, so my friend and I made sure to bring our bikes so that we could pass the time. As we were riding down the path, we happened to stumble across a shed near the woods. This was very strange, but since we were teenagers at the time, we decided to go explore the shed. At the door of the shed, we looked inside, but we could not see much since it was pitch black. I ended up finding a broken window, so we climbed inside the shed and looked around. Inside there was a few pieces of furniture, all thrown around and broken. During our exploring, we heard shuffling outside the shed. We did not think much of it, as we kept exploring the shed. After some time later, we heard a light tapping sound on the glass. We were still not afraid, because we knew the shed was abandoned. Either way, we were kind of scared, so we decided to leave and ride back to the car. When we reached the car, we took our sleeping bags and tents and started setting everything out. By this time, the sun was already setting, so it was getting dark fairly quick. When we finished the tents, we cracked open a few drinks and looked at the stars. About an hour later, as we were talking, we heard loud footsteps coming towards the tent. I looked around, but could not see anyone. Hello? Is anyone there? I asked. There was no answer. At this point I was freaking out, so I put on my phone flashlight. The light illuminated the silhouette of a man standing 10 feet away from my friend. I gestured towards my friend to be ready to run as I saw a blade in the man's hand. When I looked at my friend again, we both knew it was time to run. We bolted into the trees, disappearing into the darkness. The man started chasing after us and screaming, but since we were a lot faster, we were able to escape the man and get back to the car. At the car, we quickly drove home and ended our stargazing early. That same night, we heard of a murder that happened in that exact same area that we were in. 